everybody. We are live. And um, I've been telling you all about my special guest. And he is here, everybody. So um, I want to take a moment to welcome, welcome, welcome Mr. Shahid Shahid to Let's Talk About It. You all know I've been telling you all that he was coming, and now he is here. So welcome, Mr. Shahid. Shahid, how are you? Everything's wonderful. Everything's lovely. <laughs> okay, wonderful. So I've been telling everyone that you were going to be joining us and um, for weeks now, and I am super excited. So let me just make a few announcements uh, before we get started, um, Brother Shahid. Let me let you all know that if you need to contact me, uh, if you want to uh, schedule an appointment or counseling, please go to my website at talithakumiproductions.com. Also, those of you that are having anniversaries, you're having your um, you're having your conferences, et cetera, et cetera, and you want me to come and do a two-hour production, please go to my website at talithakumiproductions.com. Also, ladies, I want you to get ready because we do have uh, a women's conference coming up and I will be a part of that. And that is um, none other than with uh, women in the black. All right. So let me just uh, show you that very quickly. Please make sure you register. I will be singing here. That is June 15th. All right. Make sure that you uh, go to the website, womeninthablack.com, and ladies, you don't want to miss this, all right? So now, without further ado, welcome, 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 Shahid, Shahid. So listen, I want to jump right into this, uh, Brother Shahid. So where are you from? Let's start with that. Where are you from, Shahid? I'm, I'm originally from Newark, New Jersey, born and raised in Brick City. Newark, New Jersey, okay. and. Um, and growing up, who were your role models? Like, did you have any role models growing up? Oh, my role models was, you know, Muhammad Ali. Okay. One of the greatest boxing champions of all times. Right. And before that, it was, you know, you know, just growing up in the streets, uh, watching all the big boys. Those are my heroes. I'm going to tell you a story. I don't know if I've uh, ever told you this. Now, everyone, uh, this is my friend. He's my friend. And we've been knowing each other for about maybe six or seven years. Um, but I've never told you this story, Shahid. Um, when Maha or maybe I did. When Muhammad Ali, just, just before he really became Muhammad Ali, he was Cassius Clay. So he came to Bridgeport, Connecticut, which is where I was born. And um, there was some kind of big event that he came to do. And uh, when he came, um, my father was there. My whole family was there. We went to, you know, to, um, to see him. I don't know if he was doing a book signing. I don't know. I don't remember. But I was about four or five years old. And he actually picked me up and kissed me on my cheek. Wow. And put me, exactly. That's why I'm the greatest. Hallelujah. Mm -hmm. okay. <laughs> but. I don't know if I ever told you that story, right? But anyway, yeah. so um, so so basically, let me ask you this: um, when you were small, did you do any acting or modeling as a teenager when you were like 13, 14, 15 years old? No, I was involved in sports. You know, I I loved the sports, the football, the basketball, the boxing. Uh, that's what I was involved in most of the time. Okay, that took my time that created me, gave me my manhood. Okay. And let me just also say to everyone, uh, Shahid, Shahid, he is a filmmaker, director, producer, model, actor, cinematographer, and his company is called Kenai Productions. Mm -hmm. So, um, so I want to congratulate you, you know, on all of your, uh, successes. Um, and many of you probably have seen him. If he looks familiar, it's because he's been in your living room on your television screen because he does multitude of commercials as well. So let me ask you, when did you first realize you wanted to be in the industry? Well, when the boxing career was over, I realized I had to find something that I loved doing. And uh, 
It kind of like uh, I don't know if I found it or it found me, mm-hmm. but uh, I, I once it uh, found me, I uh, found a way to uh, you know to love it, you know, because it was uh, something I was interested in doing and and something I, I worked hard to do. So you really initially. So you really, really loved boxing and that's kind of what you were doing yeah. in the direction that mm-hmm. you were going in. So yeah. were you one of the greatest or you was, you know? Was I one of the greatest? Were you one of the greatest? I could have been, but I wasn't, you know? So, so, so what deterred you from that direction? How did well, it go in another direction? Well, things wasn't going my way as far as the manager's department. And uh, I decided if I wasn't going to put my all into it, then I might as well leave it alone because, as you know, boxing is a very, very uh, tough game. And in right. some cases, people die and get killed. And you got to right. put a whole lot into it. So I'm the type of person, if you don't put everything into it, then don't mess with it. Right. Okay. So, I, so okay. So when you, so when you realized you were going in another direction, how did, like, what was your first job or how did it find you? Uh, and and well, what did you do first? Was it modeling first or was it acting first that you did? Well, I was always a, I'm not a bad looking guy. And people would always say, well, you should, you should be a model or something like that. You know, people always say that when you're not a bad looking guy, a bad looking woman, they say that. And uh, at the time, you know, I was looking for, you know, something other than a nine to five, you know, <laughs> something that was going to put me, uh, where I want to be. I wanted to be able to talk to people. I wanted to be able to speak to people and in, in, in masses of people and uh, d- just to feel what modeling and acting and, and entertainment is. So mm-hmm. I put on my big boy pants and tried it. And uh, I worked hard to do it. And what I did was I took the same energy I took from being in the boxing game I transferred it to the industry game, and mm-hmm. here I came with some of the jobs. And one of the first jobs I did was, I think, a mod, uh, uh, it was a it was a, a magazine called The Secret, you know, in New York City. That was one of the first jobs I did, you know, way back in the day, you know, in, in, in the early uh, '80s. I, I did that, you know, mm-hmm. and that was one of the first jobs I got. And then I went on to do some other stuff and get some other jobs. And I found out, okay, man, this is something you could like doing because actually uh, once you get the jobs, the jobs are kind of easy because, you know, you're basically taking pictures and selling the product. And once I realized this is something that uh, I could love doing, I started working harder to do it more, Mm -hmm. you know? Okay. And um, you have worked with some of the icons in the modeling industry. Um, who were some of the other models that you worked with? And also, wasn't it Grace Del Marco that you worked with also? Yeah, well, Grace Del Marco was one of the first agencies that I started with. That mm-hmm. was a Black agency owned by Ophelia DeVore, which is one of the first uh, uh, modeling agencies uh not only uh, in New York City, but one of the first modeling agencies in the country, you know, and uh, that was a modeling agency uh, where I started from. Mm -hmm. And, you know, when they went out of business, I started moving to other agencies and uh, getting other uh, uh, agents to uh, to work for me, you know, but yeah, that was one of of the great modeling agencies in uh, New York City. It prepared us, uh, trained us, and showed right. us how to, you know, do all the proper steps to uh, sell products. Okay. Mm-hmm. And um, so when did you, when did you really realize that you had a gift? Because I mean, you know, looking good is one thing, you know what I mean? And, you know, looking good is one thing, but when did you know you had a gift and a talent for that? Well, you know, I, I, I didn't, I didn't, you know, it's like people say gifts. Well, we all have gifts. You have to develop the gift. And what I did was, 
you know, I mean, like I say, I wasn't a bad looking guy. And everybody thinks that uh, if you if, if you decent looking or good looking, per se, that you can easily model or easily act. That's no, not the truth. no, that's not the skill. Saying. You have to hone right. your skill to be able to, you know, use that gift. Okay. So I started honing my skill to be able to use my gift, which was I started learning how to make the proper movement as a model, learning how to uh, sell the uh, commercial and endorsements and stuff like that, learning how to pose, going to acting school, going to acting teachers, uh, learning everything in the business that requires me to be able to get these jobs. So, I mean, that's the hard part is the, the, is going through the pain and the rejections to be able to get the jobs, you know, okay. so... That's you know that's that that's that's what helped my gift. You know, it okay. wasn't like I was born with the gift. Nobody is born with a silver spoon in their mouth. You mm -hmm. have to develop it. You know, and that's what I did. I, I developed it. And I worked hard to get it. You know, thank God that little bit that I have, I'm grateful. And and you know, I'm glad that you and see. I had to put my hat on today because I know you always come in the place clean. <laughs> Mm. So I had to make sure I did a little something, something today. <laughs> well, listen, I'm glad you spoke about work ethic because Shahid, I'm noticing, you know, that with social media and because some people have 100,000 followers or 30,000 followers, 50,000 followers, they're kind of almost acting like they don't need to work. They don't need to rehearse. They don't need to practice. Talk about your work ethic. What did your, and what what did, and what does, even today, because I, I know a little bit about your work ethic, but I want them to know. Talk a little bit about your work ethic and, you know, your regimen, you know, your workouts, your, talk a little bit about that. Well, I'm always looking to, uh, to make myself better for the industry. Right. Of course, quite naturally, you know, uh, it's hard work, long <laughs> hours. And you have to be conditioned to be able to take this, you know. So my my day starts off first. I gotta thank the Lord in the morning, mm -hmm. you know, before I do anything. Mm -hmm. I thank the Lord, and then I get out, get my workout, and then I go to prepare for whatever I'm doing, whether it's an audition, a monologue, or editing, or writing, or anything I do. And I do this on daily, day to day basis. I'm always looking to improve myself. It's never, it's always room for improvement. And uh, you just can't, you know, today you might be working, tomorrow you not, might, might not be working. So you right. have to like keep on pushing. This is not like, a, you know, if you can't sell a product, you won't be able to get the job. So my and thing is push until you can't push no more. And you now, You've been in the industry a long time. You've had longevity of success. When you talk about your, your exercise regimen, what does that consist of? Well, I get up in the morning, I do me uh, a little run. Mm -hmm. Then I do my calisthenics. Mm -hmm. But that's, that's, my pro that's my personal time with myself to make my health better. Right. You know, because, you know, without help, you can't do anything. So right. that helps me not only uh, feel better, it makes me feel good and makes me think better, you know, because I can use all my uh, physical uh, abilities to be able to do the things that I want to do as well as think and do. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Now, I understand that when you say um, relative to getting jobs, but was there anyone instrumental in your life at an earlier age, like when you were in your 18 and 20s? Was there anyone instrumental in your life that shared with you about work ethics? Like who said, Shahid, you got to get up. Shahid, don't play around. Shahid, who, who, who was that person? Well, my mom was very instrumental, instrumental in my health and mm -hmm. me. Because right. she always told me that you can be and do anything that you want to do. All you got to do is put your mind to it. Right. So that right. stuck in my head. Mm -hmm. And uh, 
I've always been that type of person to, you know, I look at uh, all these uh, American role models, all these great entertainers, all these great sports players, all these great people. And my dream is to be able to give my sacrifice like they had. You know, they not, they not only became great entertainers, but they became great leaders in, in our world and our culture to be mm-hmm. able to talk to people, to be able to help people you know, from day to day basis. So mm-hmm. I look at that, I read about them, I, I listen to them, I, you know, I hear their stories and their struggles are just like any other struggles, but it's just that they keep on fighting through it. And, and, and that's what I live for. Okay, so your mother was pretty instrumental. Yes. One of, one of the things that that I really live by, Romans 12, 11, it, it talks about not being slothful in business, not slothful in business, fervent in spirit, serving the Lord. I don't like laziness. Mm-hmm. And, and also, uh, a slothful man hideth his hand in his bosom and will not so much as bring it to his mouth again. Mm -hmm. Those are the principles that I live by. So let me ask you, um, what do you think about the modeling and acting industry now? Do you you think it has changed since when you started in terms of how people work, et cetera? Well, now, uh, yes, it's changed. Years ago, uh, you had to be drop dead gorgeous to be a model. You know, mm-hmm. you had to look good. You had to have a certain uh, uh, height, a certain look. You had to be able to have a physical fit. Now, uh, today, they're more catering to the regular person. Mm-hmm. So everybody can be a model. You know, mm-hmm. you got big guys, little guys, tall guys, short guys, it don't matter. If you can sell a product, and you got to look the common, you have more common people looking than you have uh, models, people that look like that. So you can make more money selling to uh, the common person by letting the common person sell the product or wear the product or whatever. But then now they will start believing that, oh, I can get that. So they'll go out and buy it. So that's mm-hmm. what it's all about at the end of the day is to sell the product so some company can make the money. You know, and you're absolutely right, Shahid, because I see people with pink hair, red hair, you know. Yeah, and it's, it's, it's no discrimination now because they want to sell to everybody they can, they can afford it. And you have worked with, let's see, who are the people that you work with um, in some of the people that you worked with in the industry? Um, Imani. Um, who are some of the people you work with? Oh, I work with oh, millions of people, um, thousands of people. I mean, oh, uh, right. different, many, many, many different people. Tyson Bradford, Beverly Johnson, your mom, uh, Bruce Weber, uh, wonderful right. great photographers, uh, uh, Joe Grant, uh, Tony Barboza. I mean, I can go down a list, a line, a line of people I've worked with, thank God. Uh, that are uh, very known in the industry, you know, uh, you know, quite a few people. I don't work with uh, God. I mean, people. The, the you know, Washington. Is, I mean, and, uh, Spike oh Lee. Uh, you know, quite a few people. Well, time if, time, you know. Now, if you had the opportunity to work with anyone now, who would you like to work with, and in what capacity, modeling or acting? Who would you like to work with now, if you could work with anybody? Well, want to pay me millions of dollars. <laughs> <laughs> no, uh, I mean you always like to work with uh, great artists, right? You know, it, it don't matter who it is because I can't put my hand on one certain person. I would like mm-hmm. to work with all of them if they're great artists or great whatever they mm-hmm. are in entertainment. I would like to work with them, you know, because. Uh, uh, I strive to be that, you know, so I will quite naturally you want to see what they brainstorming about when you get with them. Because you, when you work with great people, you see their ethnics, you see what they can do, you see what they can teach you. You learn so many other things that take you to a different height. 
you know, that you've never been before. So uh, whoever is, is out there, that's great. Yeah, I would love to work with them. And y'all better be pay paying him that million dollars that he talked about. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay. So Shaheed, um, those of you that are just joining us, uh, my special, special guest is none other than Shaheed Shaheed. And he is an actor, model, cinematographer, um, director, producer, if you're just joining us. So Shaheed, uh, let's talk about some of the projects that you currently do. You just finished a project um, on your birthday. Happy birthday again. You mm. just uh, finished a project on your birthday. Let's right. talk a little bit about that because I know it was about a prison documentary. Mm. Let's talk about right. that. Right. It's a, a prison documentary called Outside the Wall. And uh, it's about prisoners who've been incarcerated and how the system treats the prisoners once they incarcerated, you know. Uh, and we just uh, went over because I geared the project towards, I want to be able to show these uh, young kids uh, what it's like to be behind the bars and what you're getting if you don't go to school. And, and do the right thing, uh, this is what you get. Because many of these guys who spend 30, 40, 50 years in the right. system, and uh, all because they didn't do the right thing, like go to school and do what they're supposed to do. So mm -hmm. I want to be able to uh, show not only what these guys went through, I want to show this is how the system is, because there's no difference between slavery and the system. Mm -hmm. you know. You know, it's just a modern day slavery at this point. And when you look at the uh, reality of the system, the people who suffer from it mostly is the African American uh, community. Okay. You know, because, uh, you know, we get the most time because we don't have the money to be able to obtain a, a, an attorney. So we wind up getting public defenders and getting all this time and, you know, losing our lives. And then when we get old enough to mm. get out after all these years, they throw you back out in the streets mm -hmm. that you do for yourself. So uh, yeah. Outside the Walls, uh, a film that I hope to be able to uh, get into the uh, educational system as far as uh, the schools and the colleges so the kids can uh, really... Uh, open up dialogue for uh, incarceration, mass incarceration. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And where can, uh, is that film out where individuals can see it? Where well, can- we, we just uh, did uh, uh, the first screening. So there are some uh, criteria and things that we're going through to uh, get it, you know, to the public and stuff like that. So. Okay. We have, you know, we're getting a couple of release dates soon, but uh, nothing right now, not right now. But we just wanted to show what it would be like for the first screening. You know, how you got to go through steps to take it to the next level. There's other people that have to see it to put it on the level where we want to get it at. Okay, wonderful. You know, and, and you know, I want to congratulate you for that because, you Thank know, you. I mean, you're welcome. I mean, you know, as a minister, um, <clears throat> you know, we, we, we've talked before, you know how I feel about, you know, uh, various things, but mm -hmm. as a minister, my job, you know, is to try to minister, you know, and just let people know that God loves them because we're not going to be here forever. Right. So if, if I can, you know, be used by the Holy Spirit to save a soul, even if they're in prison, because they too have to go to another place. I say, God use me because it's, it's really sad. And I tell you something, Shahid, um, I'm finding out that knowledge is dangerous. The more you study and the more you find out, um, this literally this whole world, you know, is, is really, you know, when you do your deep, deep study and find out where all this stuff really came from, all this pagan stuff, it's a cesspool of lies. Yeah, I mean, we have to, uh, this is where the art is so valuable because 
when you get to be a star or somebody of uh, recognition, uh, you get a chance to use your voice more so than other. Right, right. So, uh, we have to all play our part to make this, if we want to make this a better place to stay, a better place to live, then we have to use our voices. So this is the way uh, I get a chance to use my voice is through my art. Right, right. Everybody put the claps in the chat. Okay. Clap it up, clap it up. Clap it up. <laughs> Come on, make some numbers. Make some noise. <laughs> make some noise. So mm. congratulations on that. So uh, Shahid, I, you know, I see you on multiple commercials and congratulations. Now, mm -hmm. how do you prepare for your commercials relative to memorizing your lines? Now, these are things that I kind of know, but I want my guests to know because some of them don't know. How do you memorize your lines when you're doing that? Well, repetition is the mother of success, first mm -hmm. of all. Mm -hmm. If you do something over and over again, eventually you'll get it in your mind. See, you gotta understand how the mind works. Mm -hmm. A lot of people can remember their third grade teacher. Mm -hmm. So if you can remember your third grade teacher, you should be able to remember something that you just read a minute ago. You know what I'm saying? That's how I see it. You know, right. but preparation is everything. You know, like I say, that's where you get to go to school. They mm -hmm. learn, they give you techniques of how to use your memorization and stuff like that. There's many, many uh, uh, ways to do it. That you have to find the, the, the knack for yourself. And this is what you have to study. That's where you study at. That's where you find uh, all these things. But mm -hmm. my whole thing is that, uh, uh, like I say, uh, uh, repetition is the mother of success. So if you do okay. something over and over again, eventually you'll know by heart, you know. Okay. Okay. And uh, I want to share a story with you. Um, a few years ago, um, before, before she passed, obviously, um, I saw um, Cicely Tyson mm. walking in, in my neighborhood. Now, now you know, if you see Cicely Tyson, you know who Cicely Tyson is. Mm -hmm. so, and it was it was like about eight or, or nine thirty, and it was kind of dark. It was like in the summertime. And she was walking mm -hmm. up the street and I saw her coming, you know, near me, you know, and I said, hello, Mrs. Tyson. And 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 she kept walking and she said, I'm not, I'm not Mrs. Tyson. Oh. <laughs> and she kept walking. Ironically, um, I was at a I was at a store where they sell where they sold like um, um, I forgot the name of um, I forgot the name of that store where they sell all this antique, gorgeous stuff and, and, and clothing as well. I forgot the name of it, but she came in the store. And, and of course, I said, hello, Mrs. You know, because she know that she knew the owner. And of course, I said again, hello, Mrs. Tyson. She said, hello. I said, um, you know, I saw you the other, I saw you the other night, but you kept walking and you said it's not Miss Tyson. And she started laughing, right? And I said, Mrs. Tyson, I said, can I ask you a question? She says, sure. I said, I'm an actress and uh, I want to know how do you memorize your lines? Shaheed, she said, listen, she said, I don't memorize my lines. I live them. Mm -hmm. Oh, oh, oh. I was like, oh, okay, thank you. <laughs> I mean, that was deep. That was mm -hmm. really deep. She was like, I don't memorize my lines. I live it. And it made so much sense to me. Mm -hmm. So, Shahid, um, what would you say to individuals that are coming up, that are trying to do what you do? What's it, what, what, what advice do you give to individuals that are trying to break in the business and be a model or be an actor or be a filmmaker, director, producer, what do you tell those people? Well, I would tell them you have to study, read the history, read, uh, look at their biographies, their books, uh, their, their, their documentaries. All these things will teach you to be that person if you really want to be it. You got to read, you got to look, you got to, when you're trying to be something in life, you have to really uh, study who ruled before you. 
the ones that were before you paved the way. So their success, if you follow theirs, you'll get yours. Because, you know, you, you, everything has been done before. The thing is, it's not been done by you before. Mm-hmm. So when you follow all these people, these great people, you mm-hmm. become yourself. Because you took all their ingredients and made it your ingredients. So okay. then you create yourself with that. But it's been done before. It just hasn't been done by you. So okay. study. Study. Work hard. You pray on it. Or work on it. And, and, and see, the thing about the mind is that there's that old saying, whatever the mind can see, you can achieve. Okay. The mind, if you think about something long enough, mm-hmm. it eventually find a way to make it work. And that's how the mind works. That's good. That's good. All right. So we're going to get a little bit deeper now because I know that the people want to, I know inquiry minds want to know. So people talk about the casting couch, right? And Mm -hmm. uh, for those of you who don't know what a casting couch is, that is, that is when you get into the business and these producers or executives or directors want to sleep with you, telling you that's the only way that that they'll give you the job. Let's talk about that and let's get real a little bit. Mm -hmm. Um, What are your thoughts about that? And I know, and it's disgusting by the way, but um, what are your thoughts about that? And how did you deal with that? Because I know you did deal with it, have to deal with it. Mm -hmm. Well, the casting coaches, the casting couches to each his own. Mm -hmm. If that's what you want to do, then that's what you do. But my thing is, uh, with me, it was even, you know, it's, it's three things you could do. Mm-hmm. You could pay them, you could sleep with them, or you could be good at what you do. Mm-hmm. And I was told a long time ago, said, I didn't have enough money to pay him because <laughs> I ran out of money. I wasn't, I didn't want to sleep with nobody. Because I felt, no, that wasn't my right. So I had to make myself become better at what I could do. So once mm-hmm. you become good at something, mm-hmm. eventually people will hire you because the industry is very, uh, uh, how can I say, the industry can be very tough at times because mm-hmm. somebody loses money, then that means you have to fire somebody Mm -hmm. but if you make money then you keep on making money so how you do that is you have to hire somebody that's going to be the good at what they do because you can sleep with somebody and they suck at the job so now if you suck at the job nobody's going to pay to see that person nobody's going to pay nothing because but you're sleeping with them so Therefore, if you if you're not keeping a company getting any money, then okay, we got to get rid of him and you. Mm-hmm. you know what I'm saying so, you yeah. have to be good at what you do. Eventually, yeah, you can sleep with somebody, but believe me, that person they slept with, they better start being good in front of whatever they're doing as far as the entertainment business, because you can't okay. just sleep with somebody and they ain't no good at what they do. That's like okay, I'm gonna get a guy to. Uh, play on my basketball team, I uh, slept with him. But he can't play no basketball. Mm-hmm. So he ain't putting no points in the basket. You got to like, hey, well, we got to get rid of this guy. And then if you want to keep him, you go with him too. Let's get a new <laughs> coach or let's get a new basketball player. And somebody that's going to let us win. See, right. everybody, at the end of the day, everybody wants to win. Right, right, you know I mean? right. And, you know, um, I had to ask you that question because I know that's a question that I used to get asked a lot. Mm -hmm. And absolutely, um, in the beginning of my career, I literally had people tell me, you know, oh, you're not going to be able to do this if you don't sleep with someone. Mm -hmm. Now, back in the day, I was a little rough, Shahid. (laughs) Mm -hmm. I ain't going to tell you what I told them, but it was something like kick rocks. Okay, mm. it was something like that. 
uh, because I certainly couldn't sleep with Diana Ross, okay? Mm. So you are absolutely right. And I had made up my mind because I was always a rebel. I made up my mind a long time ago. No, kick rocks with that. Mm. Uh, I'm good, right? And I'm going to tell you something else that I learned along the way. A lot of those individuals have diseases, okay? A lot of them executives and what have you, but see, they have the money to cover that stuff up. Watch this. Mm. But some of the women, right? Some of the women or the men now that came along and slept with them, mm. some of them had girlfriends, some of them had boyfriends, what have you. And when they did that, they didn't even know that they got it from the executive, mm. okay? So like you said, yeah, you got three choices, okay? So uh, if someone wants to hire you as a director, cinematographer, producer, um, you know, because I know you do a lot of videos, you know, for mm. shoots also, you do you do video shoots, you do movies, et cetera, et cetera. Mm. Um, how should they contact you? How should they come at me? How should they contact you? Contact you well, if you they want to hire you. You can go to Kanai Production, A-T-T-C-A-N-E-I, production with an S, act, A-T-T dot net. Uh, you can go to Facebook, and uh, contact me through that, those, those, those resources. Okay, wonderful. You go to shahishahid.com. You can go to IDMB, uh, Shahid Shahid, the filmmaker. And uh, that's how you can get me. Okay, wonderful. And I will put that information in the description uh, below. Um, so we have, um, I got well, two more questions for you. Because Shahid Shahid must get his rest, ladies and gentlemen. I know everybody is asking uh, me to ask you this. What fa uh, face products do you use? Because your skin is fabulous. What face well, products do you use? Well, I use Abilene and grease. Listen very carefully, men too. Men? I use Abilene grease. You know, a little alcohol, a little, uh, a little alcohol and Abilene grease. That's what I use. You know, uh, I've been using that for years, you know, uh, and it does me well. And then if I get too tired, uh -huh. I'll use some uh, preparation H. Oh, you told me about that too. Elaborate a little bit on that preparation H because I know they're thinking the same thing I was thinking when I heard you say that the first time. Well, prep you... preparation H is uh, it's a it's a tissue softener. Wow, it softens your tissues. Most people use it for their anal uh, in, in the anal hemorrhoids, right? And yeah, for hemorrhoids. Right. But it's also good for your face because as you go during the course of the day, your mm -hmm. face swells up. Wow. And then when you put uh, preparation H on your face, it takes the swelling down and make your face feel fresh and young. So I use that occasionally sometimes when I come home and I'm, and I'm dead tired and I've been up on preparation H gives my face a rejuvenation. Listen, y'all, y'all better be taking notes. <laughs> yeah. I mean, yeah. you know, that's that's an old model's trick. That's uh, an old you, model's you trick. Know, sometimes you be up all day and you got to get back up today. The preparation to rejuvenate your face, so it's good for me. You know, it works for me. I'm going to get me some preparation. Hey, hallelujah. <laughs> well, let me ask you this. Um, and I want to thank you so much for joining us. Uh, thank Sean. you for having me. And let me ask you, when when you're shooting a film and you need actors or models, what do you look for in those individuals before you hire them? What do you look for? Well, I'm looking for uh, the piece to the puzzle. Mm -hmm. See, every 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 movie or every scene is a piece to a puzzle. Mm -hmm. So I kind of like know what I'm looking for before it come in the door. Okay. Now, if you can give it to me or you have it, then you can get the job. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? So it's like the piece of the puzzle. It's like, you know what color socks you're gonna wear with your suit, or you mm -hmm. know what color shirt you're gonna wear with your suit, or tie you with your suit. That's how it is with putting together a story. You know what pieces go where. It's like when you're putting the puzzle together, okay, mm -hmm. this piece goes here, that piece goes there. So that's, 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 that's how I do it. So, let me ask you when you when you um 
for individuals that are coming into business, what are some of the signs that a newbie or a newcomer should look out for letting them know that this possibly is a fake individual or this possibly is a scam? Don't work with them. What are those signs that they should look for? Well, you know, that's that's the pros and cons of the game. Mm -hmm. You have to use common sense. Mm -hmm. I mean, you're going to always get people that's got gimmicks and scams and this and that. You have that's the part of the rejection part that you have to be able to take to get to what you want. You take you you go in every place as a professional, mm -hmm. but you don't know what you you, you go in there with your best intentions, believing that this is it, they're going to do the right thing. Mm -hmm. But unfortunately, you have so many pros and cons in the business. Everybody doesn't do it. And so right. you just that's, that's part of rejection. It's it's like it's hard to say who's gonna be what and what's not gonna be what because you might go in the the littlest little hole and it might be the biggest picture. Or you might go in the biggest picture, biggest hole, and it might be the littlest picture. Mm -hmm. So you really don't know until mm -hmm. you go. Okay. And then once you start listening and you start after whatever time you elapses, you will know eventually. And eventually you will get around something, hopefully something professional enough to know what professional is all about. And then you'll be able to be able to tell the rest of the stuff, you know, from then on, you know, of course you have to see it. But if you don't never, if you're just in the beginning and you going somewhere, you don't know, you don't know nothing. You don't know nothing. Right. So you don't know the good from the bad. You have to be, you have to learn. That's a part of the experience in the business that you have to go through. You have to learn who's a professional, who's not a professional, you know, and that, and that comes from trial and error. Okay. And you better be praying. I tell you that. Cause I got, oh, yeah, I you got to pray. Yeah. That's the one of the first things you got to do. Cause yeah, uh, it's a very scary business too, because you could be walking in a booby trap, you know, this is why when you do go on these calls, let someone know where you're going, when you're going, what time you're going. You know, this way, uh, that at least somebody knows that you weren't here last. You know? Right, right. Yeah, because when I was first starting out, I, you know, I, I went on some go sees and I, I think I'm, I'm grateful that I, I've always been cautious because I mm -hmm. think that's what saved me. I always let people know where I am. Tell me about this picture. Tell that's me about a, this photo. That's a, a commercial I did in Antarctica. You know, the last place on the earth, the coldest place on the earth. I did a commercial for uh, the Silver Sea uh, uh, cruise line. Mm -hmm. it's, uh, I was the most interesting man in the world. So uh, that's, what that's, that, that's what that picture is about. It looks beautiful out there. Yes, very beautiful. Cold, but beautiful. You know, if you ever pictured Adam and Eve, how it looked, that's how it looks back mm -hmm. then. Nothing but uh, wildlife and nature. And the penguins, you know, were you able to get closer to the penguins? Of or course, they ran? yeah. Mm -hmm. Wow. Yeah, very close. Very close. Walk right by you. That's wow. their turf. That's <laughs> their turf. So they, they're not afraid. You know. It was like you in my house. Welcome to my house. Yeah. Well, Shahid, I want to thank you so, so much for being a guest on Let's Talk About It. And uh, those of you that are just joining us, uh, I was talking to none other than my friend Shahid Shahid, who is a awesome, awesome cinematographer, model, actor, director, producer, and listen, he is, uh, he is all that and then some. Is there any last words that you want to say to, um, to my guest, Shahid? Well, first of all, I'd like to say thank you for having me. My pleasure. Uh, I appreciate you. And uh, keep God first, the rest will follow. And uh, God bless you all. Hope to see you soon. And uh, love you. Okay. <laughs>
All right. Well, thank you, Shahid Shahid. And um, you have a wonderful evening. And uh, I'm going to say good night. Amen to you. All right. Okay. All right. Good night. Peace from the Middle East. Okay. <laughs> you can, um, let's see. Okay. All right, everyone. Well, uh, that was my guest, um, Shahid Shahid. Um, God bless uh, God's moderator is in the house tonight. God bless you. Amen. Sister Chapman. Hallelujah. And I uh, let me come to the let me come inside and see who is joining me on tonight. Um, all right. Uh, who is Lavani? Amen. God bless Sister Brooks is in the house. Amen. So um, everybody hit that thumbs up. Thumbs up. So, yeah, that uh, is. Um, that was Shahid Shahid, and uh, I am so grateful to God for uh, having him here. Um, and I just give God praise um, for our show. Let's talk about it. I shared with you all that I'm going to be bringing some wonderful, wonderful guests um, the last Friday of every month. Amen. And um, I'm excited about our show. Let me just have a word of prayer. Um, Father, in the name of your son, Jesus Christ, I thank you for Shahid Shahid, our special guest. And Father God, I pray uh, miracles upon his life. In the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, Father. Father God, I thank you in the name of Jesus for his life, the life of his family, Father. And I pray that the Holy Spirit will be released upon him now by the power of the Holy Ghost. Amen. So uh, I want to thank all of you for joining uh, on tonight. And uh, yeah, so that's what we will, that's what I will be doing uh, on the last Friday of every month. I will have a special guest joining us. And, um, you know, the individuals will be from every walk of life. Amen. They'll be from every walk of life family um, <clears throat> and um, and every nationality. I'm going to have different nationalities. You know, if there's some information uh, that I think is valuable, you know, for you all, then I am going to um, I'm going to bring it to you all. So everyone, please spread the word, spread the word. Uh, the last Friday of every month, I will be right here with a special, special guest. And um, uh, I wanted to talk to him about, you know, because I, I talk to you all about the business. You know, I talk to you all about modeling. I talk to you all, you know, about acting. You know, um, I, I shared with you all that when I came out of the entertainment industry, um, there were certain things I just refused to do anymore. I'm not, I'm not coming, you know, I'm not doing those butt naked scenes, okay? I'm not uh, uh, cursing up a storm. OK, and these TV shows. So now there's certain things that I can't do, but there are certainly some wholesome things that I can still do. So I wanted to bring him on to speak with you all. Those of you, you know, that may be born again and you still want and you still can do things in the industry. You just have to curtail them. But I wanted you to hear from someone who is still successful been in the business, you know, um, for a number of years successfully. I wanted you all to hear from him, okay? He's on your television even now, you know, you'll probably see a commercial, one of his commercials in the next few days. But I wanted you all to hear from someone who works in excellence. So this is what I'm going to try to bring to you all, different people, you know, on different levels that do various things. But if their information is viable for you, I want to bring them to you. All right. So I want to thank all of you uh, for joining me uh, on tonight. Amen. And uh, I want to thank God's moderator for being in the house. Amen. Thank you, Sister Chapman. And uh, once again, I will see all of you uh, in our service tomorrow. By the way, um, 
I believe I'm going to, um, you'll see me tomorrow at 8 p.m. Our new service time, because many of you know that as God is reconstructing things, I have to change certain schedules and put different things in place. All right. So our new schedule going forward is going to be Friday nights, 8 p.m. And Saturday nights at 8 p.m. So tomorrow you will see me here at 8 p.m. Those will be our new service times. All right. Friday and Saturday night at 8 p.m. And then, of course, the last Friday of every month will be um, when I have a special guest. All right. So thank you all so much for joining me on Let's Talk About It. And that's the name of this you know, program on Friday nights. <laughs> Let's talk about it. All right. So I'll see you all right back here tomorrow in service. Amen at 8 p.m. Everyone have a wonderful evening. Good night.